Okay, welcome back everyone. Uh, in this video, we're going to get started building the actual UI of the um, of the actual NFT game. So this is the ex really exciting part because now we can start with the visual stuff with the actual integration with our smart contract. So I'm going to start off as a baseline here to get the Morales sign in boilerplate because we're going to use Morales for this. Uh, as I said before, for the user authentication to be able to track events and our users in the best possible way and to get started quickly. That is the entire point. So you can check out the Morales sign in boilerplate below. You will need a Morales, a Morales account. You will need to have started up your Morales server. We have plenty of videos about that. So make sure to check out those if you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, there are plenty of, of those videos on this channel. Uh, but I'm going to start off with this. So I have an index.html and main.js file from this repository. In our NFT game folder, I'm going to create a new folder that's called client. So here we'll have all the client stuff. And uh, here I'll add the index.html and I'll also add the, I call it index. or we can call it the same main.js. Okay. And we'll also add a style.css. We also use that later on. And then in our index.html, we'll take the things from here. So this entire HTML file, we'll take that. It's not too big because this will give us uh, bootstrap. It will give us jQuery. It will give us Morales. Uh, so it has a lot of good stuff. And let me. Okay, so in main.js, we'll take that as well from the boilerplate. This has just uh, some login logic for Morales so that we can um, authenticate our users with MetaMask. And here you need to insert your app ID and server URL for Morales. So I'm going to do that. You'll find those here under view details. You can get your server URL. And your app ID. Oops. There we go. And now we're ready to uh, open this up. And in order to access this with MetaMask, you need to uh, serve this from some sort of web server. So either Python web server or um, in, um, in uh, Visual Studio Code, you can use this live server. We have videos on that too, if you need help with that. Um, so let's see here. Open with live server. There we go, index.html. And now we have our welcome screen here. We can sign in with MetaMask. We'll get our MetaMask window. We can click sign and user logged in. So a few things that we want to do. First of all, we want the user to log in before we start the game. So we'll always have that as a starting point, uh, our sign in button. But when we access the page, we want to check directly whether the user already is logged in or not. We'll modify this login function a little bit. So we'll have init here instead. So that we will run this when we run our application from the start. And then we'll try to see if the user is logged in by grabbing the account for moralis.user.current like that. And if the user is not defined, then we will actually set up the click handler for this login button. So here we can use jQuery, so jQuery for login button dot click. No, nope, click. Uh, and here we will set the user equal to await, well, this part right here, actually. There we go. And then we can skip all of this stuff. But if the user actually exists, so either through here or through here. So when we get to this point, we have the user. So here we can actually render the game because this means that the user is signed in. And if we get an error, we catch it here. Uh, we can remove this. So then we have our render game function to, to build. All right, so here's where we'll actually render our little animal creature and all of the features that we want. So I'm thinking that in our index.html, we have our container here and our button, so we can create another div below it. We can call this ID game. Okay. And here, since we have bootstrap, I'm going to do it with bootstrap. So we have div class row. And in here we have div class column medium eight. So here's where we'll have our, here we'll have an image, which will be our animal. Uh, and then we have another div here where we'll have class call 
MD4. So if you don't know Bootstrap, there are also plenty of videos about that, but this is an easy way for us to get a layout going. So what should we have as the image for our NFT? Um, I've found a uh, little free game sprite that we can use. Uh, so I will attach a link to that uh, below. I'll show you what it looks like. It looks like this. Uh, so I will attach a link to this and then you can download this and you can use this in your game. This is free to use. Uh, so we will use that as our little NFT which we'll interact with. Looks cute enough, right? So we have this here in our client folder, monster.png. Well, maybe monster for this case isn't the best. So we'll name it pet.png instead because it's too cute to be a monster. And then we can attach that here. The source will be pet.png. And uh, do, 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 do. we can have this ID be, uh, yeah, we can call it pet or maybe pet image. So we'll set the size of this in our style. We'll set this to, let's say, with 300 pixels. So now, when we log in, we should get our pet image, okay? So let's check this out. And you can already see here that when we are signed in, we have our pet image. Now we have no sign out button. We haven't even hidden the sign in button. But since we signed in before, our user is signed in. So what we're going to do as well, if we are signed in, which we are in render game, we're going to hide the login button. Let's see, that didn't work. Render game. Oh, we also need to set game. We, maybe we didn't actually sign in. We need to set game to display none, of course. And we need to display game when we come into render game. And this needs to be IDs. This here as well needs to be an ID. Dot click. That's why it didn't work. Uh, login button. We're going to hide game. We're going to show. Now it should actually work. Yeah, here we go. Sorry about that. Signing with MetaMask. Let's see if we get some things wrong. Mm. This needs to be async. There we go. Now we're actually logged in. Uh, so now we hit the login button and we have our little animal here showing up inside our game. So that's uh, super cool. Uh, and uh, it's insane how quickly it gets to how quickly we can develop something where we actually have real users and they are of course saved in our Morales database as you've seen uh, in uh, previous videos. So we have the, uh, the, the users there that have used our DAP and we can very easily uh, get all their uh, and we can very easily set up listeners for their different events and so on when they play our game. So that's super good. Now let's write out and actually get the um the properties of our nft so we need now we actually have a big thing going for this because now we have the user authenticated with metamask now we're going to use their address to get their nfts from the smart contract and actually print out the details here so we're gonna fetch the details about this nft that the user has if they have any from the smart contract and display the properties here so this is uh but because we can do that here. So let's say that we want to display the different, the different properties here inside this column. So we want to have, for example, div with the ID. So this is the token ID. Then we can have a span. Uh, ID is equal to pet ID. So this we'll have to set dynamically. And then we'll do the same for all other properties that we have. So we have, what do we have? Damage. We have magic. We have, um, what did we call this? Endurance. Yes, call it endurance. Pet endurance. And then we should have uh, time to starvation, right? Because we need to see when we actually need to feed this. So pet starvation time. So these should be filled in dynamically. 
and uh, we need to get that from our smart contract so when we render the game we should also render these properties so maybe we should have this game thing in the end so we we'll render all the properties in here get and render properties from smart contract okay that's what we're going to do in here in order to make this a little bit easier as we start off let's just start by fetching one of our um, of our nfts namely the one with id zero and not fetch them dynamically based on each user we'll finish that off later so let's say we want to get um, pet id zero and then later on we'll fix that so that this number actually comes from the metamask user then uh, we'll have to enable web3 so window.web3 is equal to await moralis.web3.enable like so and then we have to get the abi in order to create the contract and uh, we can actually create a function for this so let's uh, say await get abi and we'll create a function for this and in order to do this we need to uh, go into the build folder get the token.json let's copy that into the client folder and then we can get that here using um, jQuery so get json for token.json and then this takes a function and here uh, we get the json back in this callback function and then we'll actually have to wrap this in a promise so that we can resolve when we get this with json.abi so this file that we got here it contains abi which is this array of all the functions and events that we want so we're going to get that and we're going to resolve this promise so it will return from get abi we'll get the abi into here and once we have the abi we can go ahead and get our contract instance so let contract be equal to new web 3east for the abi and then we need the contract address so this i will create a constant for uh, at the top here And this we can grab from our, uh, let's see here, we have it here in our terminal, yes, contract address for token, otherwise you'll find it in your Ganache window. There we go. And then we can use that here. Finally, we can get the data from our contract, so contract methods, then we had get token details i think it was called or pet id and we'll do dot call with because this is a view function and from we'll make sure that we call it from the address that we currently have in our metamask so ethereum.selected address there it is finally let's just console log this data and then next time we're going to render it so let's see if we made any mistakes here uh, once again this needs to be a sync let's see come on what the hell like so there we go and we get all our properties here so damage endurance last meal magic so let's just uh, render these here we can do that in another function let's do render render pet oops and we'll input the id and the data and then we can create a function down here function ren render pet for id and data and here we'll just set all of these so we set pet id dot html should be data dot no it should just be id and then we'll copy this for all the other properties we had we had damage data dot damage then we had magic 
data.magic. We had data.endurance. Pet endurance. And then what else do we have? We had the time. Pet starvation time. And what did we call this in our... Oh yeah, we have to calculate that actually. So this has to be calculated. Uh, the starvation time. And how do we do that? So let's do that here. When will the uh, pet actually starve to death? Well, we know in our data here. That we know when the last meal was and we know the endurance. So with this Unix timestamp, we just have to add on the endurance and that's when we'll know uh, the time of when this will start to death. It's the last meal plus the endurance. Okay, so we'll convert that into a date. So let death time be equal to a new date where we'll take data for last meal, add to it data.endurance. And both of these are strings, by the way, so we have to do parse int for these two. So convert them from string to integers. And then the JavaScript date uh, library works in milliseconds. So we have to multiply this by a thousand because we had seconds and JavaScript works with milliseconds. So this would create a new date from where we'll, our pet will starve. And then we can render this for pet starvation time should be equal to death time. Okay, let's see if this works. Mm, not really. Ah, we need the ID symbol here. There we go. ID is zero, damage 100, magic 200. Okay, and something wrong with endurance. So then I guess something is wrong with this too. March 27, this could be correct because today when I'm recording, this is March 26th. So this could definitely be correct. So what's wrong with endurance? Did I misspell endurance? What's up here? Ah, there I misspelled it. There we go. So this is actually correct now. There you go. So uh, now we have all the data that we need. Uh, we just need to be able to feed it. And then we're going to make this a lot prettier. And we're going to render like a library. So I can have multiple ones of these. I should be able to mint more of them and so on. We have a long way to go, but this is a good start. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this and feel free to use your own imagination to improve this game. But I'm going to continue, of course. This is just uh, one more step towards our final goal of actually building a fun game. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about it, make sure to leave it down below. Also, I would recommend you to join the Morales beta because there you can join our community of developers. You will get help a lot faster. So go to morales.io, sign up for the beta and you will get an email with all the details that you need. Okay, also make sure to follow us on Twitter. Link is down below. And uh, I'll see you in the next video in this series. Thanks for watching.